Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's afternoon program. As you are aware, on a weekly basis, the South African Bar Association hosts a speaker to deal with a legal topic intended to assist young practitioners with training and development, and in so doing, to provide the quality of legal practitioners in our courts. This is one of the core values we hold as an organization. It's an honor and privilege to host advocates Doris good, good enough by way of providing a brief legal background to Advocate Doris. She is a member of the Johannesburg Bar and part of Group 16 Advocates in Santon. She has been in practice for more than 30 years. She's experienced in civil litigation generally, including insolvency law, family law, divorce law, personal injury litigation, commercial litigation, and medical negligence litigation. She's a mediator registered with the South African Medioco Legal Society for the purposes of conducting medical negligence mediations. Currently, she's involved in a pilot project for mediations between road accident victims and the Road Accident Fund. Advocate Doris shall be addressing us on a topic titled, How to Effectively Use Technology to Streamline Preparations for and Presentations of One's Case in Court Proceedings. A few housekeeping matters. These sessions are recorded and we appeal to participants to ensure that your microphones are muted and that your video cameras are switched off. Accordingly, during the address, all participants shall automatically be muted. If a participant has a question, simply raise your hand using the Microsoft Teams platform. Alternatively, pose your questions within the chat box and such question will be put to advocate Doris. During the question and answer session, please, please restrict questions to the speaker relative to the topic under discussion and only post such, que such questions when called upon. Without any further ado, I now hand it over to Advocate Doris. Over to you, Advocate Doris. Thank you very much, Ahmed. I appreciate the introduction. Welcome to Goody Notes. Thank you for joining me today to see the services I offer that make it easier for you to prepare and present your case effectively. My services are given under the name Good eNotes. The system that I use to give these services is called Cognotes. In its combination of features, it is unique and revolutionary, specifically designed for legal, practice, for legal practitioners doing litigation. This is Cognotes, paperless litigation systems. And I would now like to show you just quickly jumping to what your notes would look like once you have finished making them. I will come back to this shortly. The purpose of Cognotes is to give you the technical support you need right from the time you first open your brief and read, start reading the papers through your preparation and with the same work you've done through to your presentation of your case and even heads of argument. When you present your case in a virtual hearing by sharing your case with a screen, your, your screen with a judge, it is easy for the judge to follow what you are saying and to see the documents that you want the judge to see. The court proceedings are streamlined because you can quickly find the exact page, the exact line and words that you want to show to the judge, immediately share that on the screen and the judge remains more relaxed, less irritated and can spend the judge's energy thinking about your case rather than shuffling through lever arch file number four, page 722, paragraph four. You just show it to the judge. This is what Cognotes can do for you. Three main things. It can search very effectively to find what you are looking for instantly and share it. It enables you to make notes electronically. You no longer need to use sticky flags and handwritten notes on your physical pages. You can make notes that will be instantly allocated to and gathered under the issue to which those notes relate. And the third thing, 
is that you use cognotes to present your case and the judge and your opponent simply sit back and watch your screen. They can see the exact line you're referring to within seconds and that creates less stress for you and the judge. We heard Judge Roland Sutherland mention a few months ago that we must remember when presenting our cases that we're dealing with a bench of very tired judges who have too much work and not enough time to do it in. So Cognotes helps to make everything easier for the judge. I'd like to show you the end result and then I'll show you what happens what you would do in order to reach this end result. When you have finished making your notes, you will have in front of you a hot linked index to all the issues in your case. Click on any issue that you've been preparing on or want to prepare on, and you will see here, for example, that I have made three notes. The issue is the injuries and here is my main proposition the factual finding that i want the judge to make at the end of the case in support of that main proposition i am proffering to the judge three pieces of fact and i'm showing the judge where i got them from here my first factual summary is that the plaintiff suffers serious disabling sequelae as listed here. I can see the source is the industrial psychologist John Wayne's report and here is my submission what I'm saying about that fact. If the judge wants to see the actual source document you will click on this hot link the first thing you will see is the actual page in the background and ballooned out here, large, are the actual words on that page to which you wish to draw attention. Click on document and you instantly see the actual page of that report with the very words on which you rely for your factual submission. And in this way, while you are preparing, even while you are preparing heads of argument, when you start preparing your heads, you will already have the fruits of all your labors in the, that, you, that you did in the course of making notes. Some of these notes would, would be made the very first time you're reading the papers and your note making is an ongoing process and you can keep on improving on it. The end result of making your notes is a well organized list of notes per issue. You have in each case a factual summary of what that document page is showing you, the hot link and your submission. So when you present your case in court, you would simply share your cognote screen with the judge and your opponent. In addition, you can very easily convert what you've got on cognotes into a PDF heads of argument and all the hot links to all the source documents will remain live in the PDF document. You would simply email the PDF heads to the judge and to your opponent and they can then at their leisure look at those PDF heads as long as they are connected to the internet they can click on the hot links in your PDF heads and see your submissions and the evidence on which you rely. I will illustrate that to you a little bit later. Who sees your cognotes? you choose who sees your cognotes you have password protected privacy this is an online service and no one else can see your own notes when you have created a case on cognotes you are then the case manager the handler 
and the controller of that case on Cognotes. You can then create different teams. You could have, for example, your own team. So you and your instructing attorney and maybe your silk or your junior can all be in one team. And within that team, you can see each other's notes that you have made for the others to consider. You can then give your opponent his own password and then your opponent and your opponent's team can also get into Cognotes, but they will not see your notes that you have made. It will be read-only access. They can get into Cognotes, click and read the documents. Then you can give the judge the judge's own password to also get into Cognotes and, for example, go through your heads of argument or go through the documentary evidence in a very convenient way. Now I'd like to show you I'll tell you the nuts and bolts of it. If you want to do a case on Cognotes, you would email me your PDF bundles. I would upload your PDFs to Cognotes and create a hot linked index, which I'll show you in a minute. Or I could train you or your secretary to upload and index your PDFs and then simply train you to make notes and use Cognotes and do the searches. So, here we have the first stage. Once you have decided to use Cognotes, you can either ask me to upload your documents or I can teach you to upload them for yourself. So, so far, this is the same as with case lines. In fact, this demo case that I'm showing you has been taken from case lines. I have changed the names of the parties for confidentiality, but you will see that the case lines page stamp, the section and page stamp is preserved. So everything that you have got on case lines, you can transpose exactly here onto Cognotes. It goes further that you can then, of course, also put your documentary evidence. So here, for example, um, are my discovery documents. And those are those you would also upload onto Cognotes and you would make your notes on this documentary evidence using Cognotes without needing to resort to sticky flags and handwritten notes. Once you have got your hot linked index to your documents. Now you, the first thing you need to do quickly is to find the document you need. If you look here where my cursor is, you'll see that there are 83 documents in this demo case. If you want to put your finger on a case very quickly, as long as you know one word in the name of that document, you can find it very quickly. You could even narrow your search by saying, only show me the cases whose the documents whose names contain both of those words, and then you will find the one document whose name contains both of those words. In addition, you can search Cognotes for content. Every PDF that you upload to, Cog to Cognotes is automatically OCR'd, which means that the contents of all your documents are searchable and readable, copyable and pasteable. This enables you to do a search with sophisticated multiple search filters to find the very words that you need very quickly. There are other software packages that can do searches, but as far as I can see, Cognotes has got the most sophisticated and helpful search filters. So I'll give you an example of what Cognotes can do, which the other ones of which I'm aware cannot do. If I want to find three words on a particular page out of all of these 1,500 pages, I could do a proximity search. So 
I'd say to Cognote, show me all the pages where these three words appear in a single page. If I just search on those three words, I will see here there are eight hits. Some of them are in the discovery documents, some of them are in the pleadings. If I want to narrow my search further, then I could say only show me those three words on a page where they appear in the pleadings. If I click on search, I would then see that there are only three hits and that will narrow my search. I could further narrow my search and say I only want to see those three words on a page within this date range. And there it has narrowed my search to the single document that complies with those three search criteria. Now I want to see that page. I click over here. And I see here the page in the particulars of claim where those words appear. And I can very quickly share that with a judge. If I, if I think of something on my feet during cross-examination, or I suddenly remember an important thing, I can quickly find it and show it to the judge who does not get irritated while waiting me for me to find the page that I want. Right, now the next thing that you can do on Cognotes is to find dates. Just hold on a moment. Let me just quickly refresh here. Okay, so Cognotes will read through all your, your PDF pages and find everything in your documents that looks as if it could be a date and put them under month and year. So if I'm looking for reference in a document, for example, to April 2019, then I would go and look at it. I would say to Cognotes, go and fetch them and I would see the hits. It will tell me in which document those hits are and will give me the context in which that date was written. So I look through them and I say this is the this is the, the place that I'm looking for. So I click here on the document icon and it shows me there that date is written in this PDF on that page in this report. This date search is, of course, useful when you are preparing a chronology. I will show you now the next stage, which is making notes. And I would say that this is a really sterling feature of Cognotes, and I have not seen something like this anywhere else. So let's say you are briefed. Let's say, for example, your attorney briefs you on Cognotes and sends you your brief in this form. Now you want to start reading the documents for the first time. Here you see the clinical psychologist David Nevin has written a, a report and you're reading it and you want to make a note here of the injuries sustained. So you click here at the top where my cursor is on note and it takes you to an OCR searchable version of the very page that you which has the words you want to highlight. So here I would highlight those words that I want and it immediately puts those words into this little text box. Now the way that I make my note because, of course, most of the facts are not common cause, I first say, ask myself, who says this? And I click on my pre-selected list of names. David Nevin says this. And I'll say, I'll give a very short summary. Plaintiff has a broken jaw, unhealed. Okay, that's the very short summary of that fact on that page. Now I can make a comment. I could either make a private comment, which will only be for my eyes, or I could make a comment that I don't need to be private and that will potentially find its way 
into my heads of argument in due course. So let us say here, um, this impedes her quality of life. Okay. Now, I, before I go out of this note, I select here to which of the issues in my case will I allocate this note that I've made. And I put it here under injuries and sequelae. I then save it and I see it's saved as note number 89. Now I'll show you, if I go and look at my collection of notes, and I look here under injuries and sequelae, here you can see the note that I've made, the summary of the fact, where it's found, my submission about that fact, and if I want to go and look at it, I first see the slide with those words loomed out that I highlighted at the beginning, and then I can look at document and see the words that I was looking for. Oh, sorry, it's on this page. And there are the words that I was looking for. So another function of making notes is that you are building your chronology as you go along. So let's say now in the course of making your notes, you come across a date sensitive document. For example, here is a salary slip and you're reading it and you see here an important date, the date engaged. And I want to include that into my chronology. So I would click here on note. I would highlight that fact, the date on which he was engaged. It's ballooned out there. And now I go to summarize my note. Who says that? Say the plaintiff says that. And I say she started her job. That's the, that's the event. Now here where my cursor is, I can decide to include this fact, this event in a chronology. And I can choose what date I put. So I see there it says 18 June 2013. Okay, so now it is included in my chronology. And I could also include it, for example, under the story. Now I save it. It's OK. Now let us go and look at my live chronology over here. And here you can see it has automatically sorted that event chronologically to here, the 18th of June 2013. The documentary evidence says that this is when she started her job. If I or the judge wants to see later where I get that date and event from, you would click there. Here is the page in the background with a ballooned out text. If you want to see or show the judge the actual document, you would look there and show it to the judge immediately and very easily. So, If you now want to present your case using Cognotes, you would share your screen with a judge. This is one way of doing it. You would share your screen with a judge and your opponent, and they would see here the index to all the issues on which you wish to address the judge. Here you can have a summary of your case, the main factual findings or legal findings that you want the judge to make, and then you can start addressing the judge in this manner. You can show the judge here a reference to case law. And if you want to see, the judge wants to see the actual page from that judgment to which you refer, that's your statement of law, which you are relying on, you can show it to the judge there. And the entire document is right here for the judge to look at, if wished. You can, you can sh show the judge and your opponent that if they want to see the context in which you quoted that line, that they are free to look at it either during the hearing or between you know, one day and the next at their leisure. 
you can also convert these notes once you are happy with them. You can do one of two things. You can convert them into MS Word, an ordinary MS Word document, which you will then edit as much as you want to, but the live hot links will remain live. Or you could make it a PDF. So let's say I wanted to make this closing argument for the plaintiff. And it says, must I show my private comments? No, because I only want the judge to see the, the public comments. So now I click on here and I make a PDF. And there you see a perfectly respectable PDF with your heads of argument. And these hot links that you made while making your notes are retained. You click on the hot link. And you see here blown out, ballooned out the words from that judgment. There it is small. And if you want to look at the actual page in that judgment, here it is. So the judge can at his or her leisure open the PDF at home and go through your notes, click on the hot links and easily see the basis for the submissions that you have made. So let me show you lastly. Oh, sorry, let me just go into this again. I want to show to you what it looks like when you make it an MS Word document. Okay, so I'm sorry it's it's the wrong way around, black with a black background, but you can do it like this. You can let's say you now have it as an MS Word document. You can edit this just as you would any other MS Word document, and you can add in more submissions there and more paragraphs to your heart's content. Your hot links will still remain live. Sorry, let me just find one. Oh, sorry, I may I seem to have a technical glitch here. I don't seem to be able to click those hot links, but they do work. I have a new computer and so um, I seem to be clicking on a wrong button. But if you would like me to show you afterwards uh, in a private demo, how the what the MS Word uh, document looks like, I will show you that. Thank you. So that is what Cognotes can do for you and what I, under the banner of Goody Notes, can do for you. I'd like to show you just this last slide. I offer three kinds of service in relation to Cognotes. The first is that I can train you to use Cognotes yourself. If you don't feel like being trained, but you want to get the benefit of what Cognotes can offer, I can do any of these things for you and hand you over the final result. The third service that I offer is that I could be your IT tech person during your court hearing or your arbitration hearing to make sure that the exact page and line and words you want are instantly or very quickly displayed on the screen for the judge or the arbitrator to see. Thank you. I'll now open the floor for uh, questions. Please ask me any questions and I will do my best to answer them. Advocate Doris, thank you for that informative and excellently articulated address. I have now opened a platform for a brief question and answer session. <clears throat> By way of reminder, 
Participants who have a question, simply raise your hand using the Microsoft Teams platform. Alternatively, type your questions within the chat box and such questions shall be put to Advocate Doris. Advocate Doris, I'm going to initiate the question and answer session with a few short questions. Sure. The first question is, has Cognotes actually been used in court hearings? Yes, Cognotes has actually been used in court hearings. After this talk, if you would like to contact me, I can put you in touch with a very satisfied litigant who's currently involved in a very large delict case and is using con Cognotes for that. This client cannot stop talking about how using Cognotes in court saves a lot of time and also reduces the stress on everyone participating because of the instant screen sharing. Thank you. My second question is, is it possible to access Cognotes directly without going through you? Currently, I am the only person in the world, actually, <laughs> through whom you can access Cognotes. It is anticipated that within the next few months, you will be able to sign up for the Cognotes online service directly without going through me. However, you will still require to be trained by me how to use Cognotes. And if you want to do the uploads yourself, I would also train you how to do that. Thank you. My next question, and um, this is where this is the important one. How much does, does this cost, Epicatoris? Right. You'll see the link to my website where I do have a price list, but I'll give you a summary. If I upload the documents for you, it will cost you three rand per page. If you do the uploads yourself, it will cost two rand a page. For me to train you it will cost 2,500 rand per hour plus VAT and one hour to two hours will usually suffice to get you up and running. To learn how to do the uploads yourself would probably take another 30 minutes to an hour. Those are my main charges. I would then also offer you backup support, which I will charge at an hourly rate. If you would like me, for example, to create a chronology for you in a new case that you don't know anything about, I would then sit and consult with you and your instructing attorney in order to find out the main facts of the case and what date ranges I need to look out for. That, in my view, is doing the work of an advocate, and for that I would charge my normal rate of 3,000 Rand per hour plus VAT. For the service of being your IT or tech person during the hearing, that fee would be negotiable. It would depend on the magnitude of the case and on various other factors. Lastly, I'd like to mention that insofar as you are doing a case on contingency, I am willing to negotiate with you an arrangement for, for deferred payment and that we can discuss and see if we can reach a mutually acceptable arrangement. Thank you. Thank you. My next question is, can one try Cognotes out before, before committing? Yes, certainly. On my website, you will see the first easy thing you can do is to just navigate the read-only version. On my website, on the left-hand margin, it says view demo case, and you can click on it to see how you can open the documents and so forth. If you contact me, I will give you your own password for temporary trial access so that you can try your hand at, for example, doing the searches and making notes and seeing how they are gathered together under their different issues. You would be welcome to do that for free. Thank you. My last question, what if one, what is one does not feel like being trained, but wants to benefit from the service? Well, that problem can easily be solved by getting me to do it for you. So, for example, let's say your attorney briefs you 
for the first time with two or three thousand pages of documents. And you like working on paper, OK? You can work on paper, make your notes on paper if you like, and I can convert and transform all of that to electronic notes. Or what you might want is before you even start reading all those thousands of pages, you could pull me in and say, Doris, I want you to create a hot linked chronology for me so that before I even start reading these papers, I've got a handle on the story and I can see by clicking on your hot links in your chronology, which are the most important documents and pages that tell the story. So I could do that for you and I could also do your screen sharing in court. So my role in your life as an advocate could be that I am the bridge between the technology and you doing your case. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Advocate Doris, I'm going through the chat. I think we've answered a lot of the questions that are in it. Just for the just for clarity's sake and for those that and for the participants here in, uh, how could we contact you if you if you don't mind the session is recorded if you don't mind could you uh, could you say your contact details out? Absolutely, I'll do that. Firstly, my website is on this slide over here. It's https forward slash forward slash goodenotes.co.za. My telephone number is o. 82567171710. My email address is doris at goodynotes.co.za. And I am at Group 16 Advocates, fourth floor, Sala House in Santon. Thank you so much, Advocate. There's a question from Eric. Eric Quota, you can simply unmute your mic and or your picture. Uh, thank you, AJ. Uh, good afternoon, Advocate. Hello. Uh, yes, Advocate, can, can I please ask if the system is immune to cyber crimes since like uh, cyber crimes uh, are skyrocketing now? And if not, like uh, what like security system are you using? Thank you, okay. Advocate. Okay, I think that's an important question that you raised. The Password protected privacy is effective. If you have specific questions and concerns about how it can be hacked, I can put you in touch with a software developer who can give you the reassuring information that you would like. Thank you, Advocate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Advocate. Um, Advocate, there doesn't seem to be any more questions. I think you have your I think your presentation was comprehensive enough that, uh, that it didn't need for any more questions. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. We would be, we, we would be hoping to be dealing with you on an ongoing basis soon enough. Um, what remains is on behalf of the South African Bar Association, we sincerely thank Advocate Doris for inspiring address and obviously her time. It goes out without saying that we are eternally grateful. Appreciation to all those that have participated virtually and shall be watching this session at their leisure. These sessions are recorded and the recordings can be found upon the South African Bar Association website, that being www.rsabar.net. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Cheers.